I don't want to make figs, Dad. I don't want to be you. You're going to bag up those tiny plastic penises and you're going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me the next shiny new thing. 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 Hey, I'm sorry. I've lost my track of my notes here. Is it about uh, chicken implants? Are we going to get to that? Because I'll talk about them. I've decided I will. Uh, <laughs> I noticed you had a pretty nice booty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's all store bought, but thank you. <laughs> so you mentioned overall the prices have been steady and fair over the years, and you know obviously the price of parts have gone up. I imagine I mean, your overheads increased. How how do you manage to do that with uh, like say like the heads you said you haven't touched them in like a couple of years? Um, I you know it's I watch very carefully if there's like an ebb and flow of availability of parts, and there was a while when you just couldn't get light flesh or yellow parts parts very easily heads specifically and all i had was different different color heads and that's when we started doing like luchadors and stuff that like oh we're doing a lot of ski masks now so we try to like it's like a farmer's market right like you cook with whatever ingredients are available or in season at the time a lot of the parts that we're getting are coming from pick a brick recently and it seems to be that if they're just setting the market price that 96 cents a torso is going to be what it is if that's the new normal for the price of a Lego torso. I don't know, man. I, I could see getting to a point where a, a fully printed torso with arm printing is seven bucks and it's just going to be what it has to be, I guess. Hopefully with that factory being built here in the States, that could help offset some of the costs. Yeah, because I'm going to rob a factory in the States. That's what's going to happen. We're going to come into the <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, so I had one, quite, one, one interesting question that was brought to me was asking about the pricing methods. For example, the uh, Boner Wonderland, you know, five figs, accessories, card back was 90 bucks. Yeah. But the turtles themselves, very minimal, cheap accessories, you know, from Lego, no packaging. They came in a Ziploc bag, 100 bucks. And it's four of them. So was this due to what you said earlier about the dark green uh, monofigs or? No, I just think I'm bad at math. <laughs> 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 uh no it's not i it's not that carefully thought out of uh, again like i knew there was only like 90 of them and if i had said like there's only 90 of them guess what everybody they're 500 bucks um, they would have sold i yeah, probably they yeah sold. they would have yeah, maybe you just would have taken 10 minutes instead of five minutes to sell like that yeah yeah but that's like that's an easy score for me but it ends up people being like cool man thanks for showing them to me i can't buy them you know i don't want to people walking away feeling like they never had a shot at it you know no i'm not out to juice everybody for the every dollar i could possibly get but yeah you make a good point you caught that i didn't catch that i didn't catch it what you would call it? hammerstein caught that uh so long time collector yeah uh, and uh he i'll give credits to hammerstein he caught that a little anticlimactic yeah no <laughs> no i mean yeah i wish i could say like oh there's this huge matrix of prices that i use I will tell you this. I'll tell anybody just as kind of like a a precursor to any price increase we ever do, which I'm not currently planning on, but seems to be like inevitable just based on that everything else costs more money than it used to. You know, when we do like packaging and foam cutout inserts for figures and tins and stickers on the tins and and wax seals on stuff, all that stuff is really pretty expensive not to mention the fact that like i hire people to to help me make them you know i am definitely uh not buying jet skis off of anybody's citizen brick purchases you know it's it's a pretty we do a lot of this stuff for the love of the sport there are definitely some products in the catalogs right now that i know we lose money on which is a bad way to run a business but i just kind of want people to be able to get them i don't really feel like exploiting every possible avenue of making money sometimes we just like i'll oh, just do it to make it better like i just want to make a better figure even if i know it's kind of like making the profit margins really small on something you know well it's interesting you say that about the not wanting to put everything out there that you know will make money because 
you know, just like as the uh, the big shot is the motivator for some to spend money. Um, back in the day, you had the stud club. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. the stud club was a uh, was a point system. Uh, I'll I'll just say it's kind of akin to uh, like other sites like Firestar have points that you can earn with purchase, and and but then you would be able to spend those points on different various you know chashki items and whatnot. I know there was like badge bricks and and whoopee cushions and yeah 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 all sorts of stuff. Now you said before uh, in the previous um, discussions that I could sort of dissolved because you were it was just hard to maintain. You're running out of ideas. Now that Citizen Brick is built up, like you said, forty percent in first time buyers, right? Yeah. You feel yeah. there's a potential market to bring the stud club back. And maybe expand into other types of merchandise like uh, more sets or more merch or like vinyl toys. Do you get your uh, yeah. party enthusiast plushie? <laughs> <laughs> so there's, a, there's a couple of points to that. Like, yeah, Stud Club was just, a, we were trying to take a piece of software that was advertised to us. And, and we tried to make it do a thing that it wasn't really designed to do, which is, you know, it was kind of designed to be like, spend ten dollars and get a dollar off and we were trying to make it do like spend ten dollars and get a whoopee cushion and it was really just kind of like not meant to do that and then the other part of it was just inflation like a dollar per like you get a point for every dollar you spend there were some people i owed like thirty thousand dollars worth of <laughs> stud club stuff too it was just it, it collapsed like a uh, like inflation a lot the, the idea was just like i think it would be funny to make a whoopee cushion or an air freshener i like making swag like that it's just it's a fun exercise for me and it's kind of in my wheelhouse and it was going to be just kind of like a vehicle for that it wasn't very effective as far as driving sales or anything like that i just thought it would be a good reason to make coffee mugs and stuff but it, it became kind of really cumbersome and we decided that besides paying like a fortune to run that software we could just do and we'll do like, hey, this weekend only any order gets an air freshener, that kind of stuff. So now we just make the stuff and we'll just give it away straight up rather than all the accounting that came along with the points and, you know. My kids have gone to like, and my wife has gone to like my CB coffee mug and I'm terrified yeah. when I'm just going to break it because it's not going to be able to replace it. Yeah, they stopped making that particular kind of mug. Whoever made that mug for the promotions industry stopped making them so... I think we're done making them too because I really liked the shape of that muck. They're a little bit of a collector's item now. So does that make sense? Like we're yeah, no, absolutely. I'm gonna make swag like that, and it's fun to give it away, and and then we'll just straight up give it away instead of like make you tally up points for it. That's a little goofy. Does that, does that include t-shirts? Because my size is not on the website. I've been trying to get a t-shirt for oh, t-shirts. Besides being 100% of my wardrobe is Citizen Brick t-shirts. It's like a weird kind of Steve Jobs, but in reverse, <laughs> you know, like, oh, he only wears the same thing every day. But mine's born out of just like OCD laziness. I wear, I'm wearing it right now. T-shirts are a pain in the butt uh, because they're, we, we run out of one size or another very quickly. And Lego fans tend to skew in crazier sizes. We, we always have some, some version or another left in, in, in huge amounts. So, we should always have t-shirts because I always need new t-shirts. Yeah. They're, they're just one more thing to make. Will your, will your new uh, screen printing machine be able to facilitate that? No. Uh, it's a different kind of ink. I, I We're never going to print our own t-shirts because I think that that is a big retooling operation. And I don't really know how to screen print uh, t-shirts. Zach, Zach does. does. Yeah. But I, a big opportunity for Zach, that would have been, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think I don't know if he would want to do it. I think it's really tough work, and I think he's happier. He loves working there. I can tell you right yeah. now. I do but mention as long as he's got his yoga and beans, he's happy. You mentioned that screen printing press that we made posters on, and that is really I have this nightmare where I'm it's gonna be like when you go see a band and they're like, Oh, we're gonna play only stuff off the new album now, and you're like, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, cool, Citizen Brick's only making posters now. But right now, I'm I'm really super in love with that machine, and it's super fun to make them. So I'm going through a little bit of a honeymoon spell with my new poster-making factory settings. Will, will there be some available at Brick Fair? Yeah, that's oh, the plan. Uh, I got to have a very perfectly 
timed out week next week, but I'm planning on printing a new poster for next week. Yeah. Yeah. I've got the 10th anniversary one uh, framed over here right next to my desk right now. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious what happened with, um, with those stud club high earners. Is there like a resolution for them or do you have to give them stock in the company or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think we planned originally when when we when we originally started, we thought like what's the highest number we could imagine? It was something like fifty thousand points. It said like for fifty thousand points, we'll do one contract murder for you. <laughs> and i swear like there was somebody who was getting pretty close like forty-five thousand points or something so i'm glad we quit it before i had to go kill somebody but <laughs> yeah it just uh, got out of hand a little bit so uh i mean we, we got all the hard stuff out of the way joe all the stressful mm. stuff now we get to the fun stuff you mentioned uh it's not quite a democracy you're willing to hear inputs from the team regarding new uh new ideas you also mentioned at one point uh, elsewhere that you you have a list or a notebook that you keep that has a running backlog of ideas you've had. Yeah. How often? How do you determine when to pull from that list compared to just the new idea that pops in your head and you're like, I got to do this now? Oh man, I I I wish that there was like a logic to it. A lot of times I just flip through the book and go, all right, can I? A lot of it is just parts availability, like. Okay, yeah, that's an idea. Let's see if I can, if the conditions are better than they used to be for making this thing. Anyone who's looked at our catalog knows that I have a real soft spot for 90s movies because I was from there. I, I One of the ideas I was kicking around is doing kind of like a, a March Madness bracket and have everybody vote on what the next thing we should do. Oh, we were going to bring that up, actually, doing a community oh, really? poll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't quite know how to administer that, but I do like... Uh, yeah, I think we could take suggestions. Well, I, I you know what? Uh, Carrie runs Minifigure Madness, or Minifigure Monday, every week, and has a lot of experience in dealing with vote offs and stuff. Okay, well, Carrie might well, uh, I might need some consulting. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah. So let but, me take uh, let me get a list of thirty two nineties obscure nineties movies that only I like, and <laughs> we'll see which one wins. Does it, so I have to ask this when I when I, when I specifically ask questions from the from the listeners about what to ask the guest i specifically say don't ask me questions like are you going to make this Mm. because i i want to do i'd rather do more nuanced questions that explain more about the person humanize the brand get an idea of the process Mm -hmm. but i i have to imagine and i have to know do you you must get more suggestions than anybody else i can think of how annoying does it get uh no i I, I mean, annoying. I'm sure you enjoy them, but at the same time, you've got that backlog in your in your, in your back pocket. Yeah, I will say that I always welcome suggestions, and I try to politely say, like, "Oh, I don't know, man. Like, maybe I'm not sure I can do, you know, the Beverly Hillbillies. You know, that's a pretty old show. You know, <laughs> like, you always get people who are just like they have a thing that they really love, and you have to appreciate that because if there was something. Do you remember, I don't know if I, how old everybody is here, but there was a show when I was a kid called The Land of the Lost. Absolutely. Yeah. Like they a really the, catchy theme. Yeah. The, do you remember the, let's quiz you now. Um, do, you remember the, dinosaurs. do you remember the lizard guys in it? Do you remember what they were called? I don't know what they're called, no. Oh, uh, the Slee Stack. When I was a kid, I was so sure that I was going to grow up and be a Slee Stack. I just, that's what I wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> they got like a crossbow and... That just seemed like a good job. You know, okay. Sash, I think I had a, I think I had a toy of that. Yeah, I just wanted to. Be, like, it just seemed like a good union gig to be a sleeve stack. So, I have been like trying to figure out what my threshold for spending would be to get like injection molded tooling to make my own custom sleeve stack head. You know, and I know that at the end of the day, I'd be the only one that would be super delighted with it, and it would be kind of a fiasco. Would this trump your love of your Planet of the Apes line? Nothing ever will. And it's not really a love so much as it's like, you know, I think that that is a chilling vision of our future. And I think everybody should be preparing for it. And they're not. My heart will always belong to uh, Planet of the Apes first. I I would. I've said it before. And I would make this an only Planet of the Apes minifig company if I felt like I could keep the lights on doing that. (laughs) (laughs) Is that just for the classical lore or the newer movies as well? I have much more 
tolerance for the expanded universe of Planet of the Apes than I am for like the expanded universe of Star Wars. You think the Bone of Wonderland set at least gives you one of the characters from the newer films now, doesn't it? You know? Yeah. I uh yeah, I have much more um conservative feelings about you know the expanded Star Wars universe. Uh, they could give me they could give me any uh Planet of the Apes stuff, I'll go for it. Yeah, I'm looking at a slee stack and I can tell you that everybody wants that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guarantee you. I'm going to look this up because it's been a while. And I, I don't think I'm at the point that where CB can release almost anything and I think it would be a pretty good show. Uh, I remember that bug eye fucker. That, <laughs> that stage, you know? <laughs> Maybe, but like, as soon as I start believing that, like, oh, we could do anything we want. We have carte blanche to do whatever. That's <laughs> where it all falls apart. I hate, I hate that. <laughs> you know what I remember about Lana Loss? I hated that caveman kid. Oh yeah, he was the worst. Yeah, I hate that he guy. Was, yeah, he was the worst. That's what I want to be a sleep stack. <laughs> you got to do it. All right. Well, well then, I'm going to take advantage because this is my platform. I can do what I want. I'm going to suggest <laughs> uh, some some figs real quick, and these yeah. are trying to keep in line with the iconic pop cultures that I think kind of fall within some of the things you've done. And feel free to give me that that definitive. You know, I hate it. <laughs> you have to give your employees. I'm I'm curious why you haven't done Blues Brothers yet. I, do you want me to shoot them down like in real time? I could tell sure, you. Sure, sure, okay. that's be fun. You could do uh, like a, a smash or pass. There's only like five <laughs> of them. I would say <laughs> that um, uh, those hats are not to my liking. There's not the, the Lego fedora doesn't doesn't serve all purposes, and I don't think that I think it needs a different hat. You know, it's funny how parts availability is becoming a running theme almost every question we ask today. Yeah. Well, I want it to be right. It's not, no, it's it's no, it's really interesting. I just never. Realize how much that would factor into all these these questions. All There's right. Um, oh, sorry. Sam, go ahead. Go ahead. Sam, Sam Kinison. Uh, it'd be a cool minifigure for sure. It just doesn't like spark joy for me personally. I was never a huge fan. You know, that's, I that's a very fair assessment. I mean, I don't have thinking, a deep. I don't have a deep background for it. I think it just came up with scream enthusiast in my head, and I thought <laughs> that would be great. Distinctive costuming is always like the number one criteria for us. And okay. I can picture what he looks like in my head, so I guess you got that. Okay, well then, for generic brand, uh, bland costuming, I was thinking uh, Andy Kaufman. Oh, that'd be tough. Like that, nothing breaks my heart more than when someone looks at something I drew and goes, "Like I don't, I don't know what that is." And I feel like Andy Kaufman's like a white jumpsuit, maybe sideburns, you know, maybe. Yeah. And I think we had a, I think we had a, a Britney Spears idea at one point. Oh, I'm. But- I'm into that. Um, I think it was the um, the was it the toxic outfit? It's like all red and whatever. You could do that's a five pack uh, through the ages. <laughs> that's the uh, oops! I did it again. Yeah, the mistake enthusiast. Yeah. I think that's what we were gonna call it. <laughs> <laughs> I would go. I'd do more of a. What's the first one that she did? The first video one. The, oh, maybe the one more time. Girl one. Yeah. 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 I mean, I that's a, I would do. I'd probably do Britney now. I think she's more interesting now. <laughs> taking a different different trajectory now i'm like uh i'm into which i'm into her thing now yeah yeah so those were some of the ones that we had off the top of our heads one day i was just and i was like zach don't don't ask him he's like no no i'm gonna ask him like no, no i don't want you to get in trouble i don't i don't want to abuse my like, access I like, here i feel like zach is he's terrified of you yeah he should be um <laughs> But I feel like he's like the first guy we've ever had who's like more, deeper into custom Lego than I am. You know, I have like a healthy distance from it because otherwise I would just be, you know, he really knows everything that's going on. And I have to constantly ask him, like, who is this guy? And do you have any examples of these figures? And he's always bringing me stuff that I hadn't seen, which is both like a blessing and a curse, right? Like, right. If you focus on everybody's doing everything, you kind of like lose track of what you're supposed to be working on. So I don't I don't try to like hyper fixate on what the competition's doing, but he collects all that stuff. So he brings this in and goes, "Oh, did you see what this this guy did?" I'm like, "Oh man!" So it kind of like I kind of like looked through my fingers a lot of times when he brings me stuff. I just I did a search in my in my uh, in my chat. I mentioned uh, all those ideas to him back in 2022. <laughs> so he's he's doing good about not not crossing that line. I never want to put him in a bad situation. No, no, no. He knows. He just gets to judge my facial reaction. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a cool idea, man. I guess yeah. Let me start drawing Andy Coffee. 
<laughs> well, you know, one thing that he mentioned to me, which I thought was kind of interesting, was that apparently he said a lot of the team is not into this stuff. They're just there to print. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, cool. I would say fascinating. That's always been. I wouldn't say it's like a, a search criteria, but it it has definitely been an advantage, I think, that most of the people who work for us are kind of like Lego agnostic. Um, well, rule one, you don't get hooked on your own stuff. That's <laughs> definitely part of it. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, like we hire a lot of people just for a real technical printing background, which Zach has. So he was kind of already like, he was um, an easy pick for me. Um, the fact that he's like really knowledgeable about the community is a bonus. But uh, yeah, no, he's he, he was really bummed out he couldn't be here tonight. But yeah, yeah, he's a he's a very good printer and is very knows his stuff for sure. So we're talking about um, all these characters and stuff, and we mentioned '90s movies. Uh, yeah, you really don't chase current popular trends you're always doing more iconic stuff uh because they kind of like a lot of them don't have the shelf life right that, that was my next yeah. question was that you yeah. worry about the longevity of the character based on pop culture uh you know it, it's ultimately the, the 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 rule that wins is like if i like it you know which is cool it's a great amount of freedom i kind of like live and die by my own hand with that like <sighs> The the last show that I really got super into was season one of True Detective on HBO, mm -hmm. where I was like, oh, my God, I can't stop watching this show. And man, wouldn't it be awesome if I could make these into Lego minifigures? And I know I could do it, but like it didn't it was like one season of one show and it's now like seven or eight years ago. So it's like it's tough to do stuff in real time. You know, and the longer you go, like when people go, what is this? You know, that happens to me a lot where people go like, I don't remember this. And hopefully I can draw it well enough that they do. I don't think we've done too many things that would really miss the bullseye. I don't know. Maybe you guys feel differently. <laughs> no, no, it's a valid point. And uh, my question, that, that was actually going to wonder, like, what is, what kind of lead time do you need? Like if, if you pulled an idea and you said, we're doing this, the parts are available. I'm going to start designing tonight. What's the usual lead time between conception to execution? I would say more and more things are including a custom molded element, which is great. It really um, adds an extra edge, I think, to what we can do. <clears throat> and making those sometimes adds weeks and weeks and weeks of development to it. Um, but if it was something just like an idea that, is just straight printing and the parts are around the shop. I would say like from idea to on press could be as little as a week. More often than that, we're working kind of like 90 days ahead of schedule. Like I'm working on stuff now that I expect to have on press in 90 days. One, one thing that's iconic about Citizen Brick that no one's really replicated yet are the big heads and the tall heads. Right. Some like one brand has tried to replicate the big heads, but they, they are widely see it as inferior product both in structure and look and feel what where did those where, where was the idea from that spur from oh i wish it was more cerebral of an answer but it was really just like they made me laugh i thought they were funny, <laughs> <laughs> I just really they were funny. and it's fun it's interesting because this is because we made those at the beginning of the pandemic so for a while they were kind of like on the website and the real test of it is when i bring them on the road and go to conventions and and civilians, non Lego people see them. And this is the first year where I'm really kind of like field testing them, and kids love them. <laughs> like the public days of conventions, people really get a kick out of those molded parts. So I, I it would be crazy not to. I think we're immediately developing another batch of those different ones because they're hilarious and <clears throat> they really solve a part scarcity problem for us. Like to oh, be yeah. able to make our own things to print on in an infant supply is definitely like the safe Harbor I'd like to be in. We don't have to worry about anything with that. And it, you could differentiate yourself from Lego brand as well, which I suppose is an extra bonus, isn't it? Less, uh, yeah. less risk from, from them perhaps. 
at 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 the risk of saying like, all right, we're gonna play something off the new album now. Like, I really <laughs> would like to. Well, let's say this: like the space that we do, that we're getting into more and more, that we're drifting towards, is. I don't want to say getting away from Lego because they always will have some kind of Lego DNA. That's what Citizen Brick is. But I like pushing things that are becoming like a few generations different away from just the conventional minifigure part, if that makes sense. It's interesting to us to try and expand like what we can do. I've always said that like working within the limitations of what the shape of the minifigure and the the print process, I always like working in those parameters but injection molding has kind of like expanded a lot of what we can do. We can kind of like imagine things that, you know, we couldn't do before and still have it feel and fit with a Lego. So that's pretty interesting to us. So Joe's sitting at the dinner table, turns to his wife and says, honey, bongs. You're going to make bongs. <laughs> I, I think I was doing it before I even told her I was doing it. <laughs> I, do, I, I, I like that idea, though. It's like a eureka moment. You literally sat there eating dinner quietly. You just get up suddenly, bongs. That's the answer. You know? <laughs> you I started bong. introducing introducing myself as the Midwest's largest toy bong manufacturer, and I think that that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I'm gonna skip over one question real quick, but because you mentioned about steering away from Lego uh, in the past, you've mentioned that you were able to seamlessly, you like the idea of your of your figures seamlessly fitting into a, a, a purist collection, you know, kind of seamlessly, yeah. like say like the S&M figs, right? They're, they got that same simple, basic Lego feel, even though they're a design that Lego would never do. Right. But over the years, your designs have gotten a bit more complex with more intricate details. And I specifically think of things like <clears throat> um, right. the legs, the, you know, the way the pants are printed. Now, is this because you're steering away from your original mantra? Or is it because you're increased familiarity with the technology and what you can push it to do? I'm just curious uh, about. For that one, I, I consider that to be. Hang on, let me think of a better way to phrase this question. No, I know what you're saying. I think I think we're better printers than we were 13 years ago. I think when I started and I wasn't as familiar with um, AFOLs, I was kind of coming at it from my frame of reference, which is a very kind of. 80s lego aesthetic aesthetic excuse me so i was drawing them the way that i kind of remembered them in 1986 you know and i quickly realized like oh no, no like legos have a highlight they have a highlight in the eyeball now they don't have the right. kind of simple you know so they got kind of they evolved more complex pretty quickly and i would say that like lego figures today the ones that come out of the factory are, are pretty detailed too. They definitely, I, I think it's kind of like everything in the Lego and custom Lego universe kind of bleeds into each other. I think that Lego watches what the custom community is doing and vice versa. So, I mean, like I said before, like, I don't think we can get away without making back printing anymore. And I don't think, I think if we do shoes, they now have to be all the way around, you know, um, I'm still not doing like under the arm printing as a regular feature until I see Lego doing it. I still think that there's some lines I'm going to hold. No side printing. I think, uh, man, I, th I think some people just like, well, if we can't do better, we'll just do more. Now I'm going to start talking trash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I don't feel like that's an, that's an imperative for us. I don't think it makes it better in many cases. Sometimes it becomes an exercise and just like, I want to see if I could do it well. Um, like our tattoo figure was completely, you know, 360. Do you have a copy of my script? Because that's, uh, that's coming up next. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think for everything I say, declarative sentence wise, you could find a, 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 some, something to yeah. contrast it where I did the opposite. Well, I mean, if you take like, like say heavy metal enthusiast, right? One of the earlier figs. Uh, yeah. But then you'd look at like milkshake enthusiast with the oil print all over them. Yeah, or body enthusiast, uh, the girl with the tie dye. That's what I'm referring to when I say, you know, how much your design has progressed a little bit. Like it's like next level Lego now, almost. Oh, I like that. I'm going to put that on. Like, can I can that be like <laughs> a, the pull quote for the book? Absolutely. <laughs> Brett, Brett says we're next level Lego. Next level um, Lego and the Midwestern lead of. Yeah. <laughs> I think, um, you know, I, I do see what what people are 
Well, I mean, first of all, I want people to feel like they're getting their money's worth, you know, and sometimes I, I feel like we have to keep up with people's expectations. I mean, I would have preferred not to print on the back of the legs all the time. It adds a certain dimension of complexity to our process and it increased the cost and so on and so forth, but it's what people have come to expect. So, you know, I got, I can't, I can't be the one who said like, we're not doing that when everybody else is doing that. So, right. um, you know, I'll look back on stuff and go, Oh man, like, yeah, it's cooler this way. You know, <laughs> that usually wins the day. Sometimes, sometimes I don't think a design needs more. Like we did, um, uh, let's call it a, a Freddy Krueger esque figure last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and some people complained because there was no printing on the legs. And I just looked at it and said, I think it's done. I think we've certainly delivered a lot of value in this figure. We custom molded, you know, what was really a moonshot of a accessory piece for the hand. Um, I felt like I think that was pretty good. <laughs> like the fedora. Yeah, we use the fedora. <laughs> and I don't think that um I don't think it needed any more than it got. I think splashing ink on every surface just to say you did it, I don't think is necessary. You know? But there are there are occasions where it is merited. And like you mentioned your tattoo enthusiast. That was yeah. how many that had like seven colors, I think. I think so, yeah. It was something crazy. And yeah. would would you say that's your like most challenging thing to produce, like in terms of like registration and yeah, I think so. Um, although I think we've got some other stuff now that's going to rival it. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Like, I, you know, we keep ratcheting up the complexity of things, I think, and partially because I just think, you know, customers expect it. You know, we can't we can't afford to coast. There's a very competitive uh, field out there. There's a lot of good stuff. Um, we've already said enough things that we don't do. We don't do, you know, I'm not making you Han Solo. I'm sorry. You know, like people know not to come to us for Nazis and Star Wars figures. So, you know, we've already made enough lists of things we don't do. So I, I like to think that the things that we do, we have to really do them well. I think it's a good balance too, man, what you said, you know, with um, the complexity of one thing compared to another, you know, for the most part, a lot of the figs exactly serve the purpose that they have but then you have a piece every so often that you'll bring out like the tattoo enthusiast or like the the current visible man now uh where you can almost say it's like your magnum opus it's like it's the culmination yeah. of everything you know yeah yeah i i'm I, i'm happy that people would see it that way because that that's how i feel about it it's sometimes yeah sometimes you just want to like go over the top and it's those are the kind of things like they're just they're they're not great on paper they cost way more money than we make on them for sure. But sometimes I just want to, you know, flex a little muscle and see if I can outdraw what I think I can do, you know? Yeah. And, and they do, they really stand out as well, even amongst the, you know, the, the CB range. Yeah. I like to think so. You know, this is a little bit of an aside and I don't know if anybody has ever been, would ever step up and be the governing body of it, but when's custom Lego going to come up with its own kind of Academy awards? Like, that would be that visible man would be my nominee for this year. I think <laughs> we've got a guy in our community named Ed who does it for superhero stuff. Perhaps we can get him uh, get him on the yeah. CB train. <laughs> a lot of a lot of a lot of us in the yeah a lot of the collectors. Uh, Sket does it. I do it. A lot a lot of collectors will do their top ten figs uh, of the year. And I think I think for some of us that have kind of grown to a certain level within the community, people come to us looking to see what we like. Um, I encourage everyone to have their own taste and like how does like they like does uh, Rolling Stone magazine used to do like they'd take like ten editors and ten people would give their top ten so there's like a lot of range of opinions like I I I've seen people do like here's the here's the minifigure of the year and eight of them will be clone troopers you know so you could <laughs> tell, you could tell where people's kind of like favorites are located well you know um, you should you should do Joe I mean you've hmm. got your you've got your close circle of folks that you trust with, you know, like hall of famer evaluation stuff, lean on them and, and let them help formulate something like that, or at least provide the combinations. <laughs> you know, I think, I think they would all just say, those guys would all just say CP figures. And I was like, I just, <laughs> I just have my own award. Well, I, mean, I, I think, I think honestly there, there should be a custom hero. There should be a custom CB and there could be an overall category because I think that there's two different audiences and there's two different purposes. Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. it's not fair to compare CB against the 
a factory that's doing all this inject and molding and, you know, custom capes and helmets and weaponry and all this crazy stuff. I don't and know. Maybe, I mean, maybe I just feeling really confident about some of the stuff we've done lately, but um, I don't know. Here's your validation. I was a superhero only guy. Phil was a superhero only person. There's a lot of us that were superhero only that are now all in on CB as well. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There we go. I'll take so, that. I'm just an, I'm just another collector like anybody else, but <laughs> I have pushed off buying hero customs to save for CB releases. Okay. I can't He's answer. leaving you with me bankrupt and homeless, basically, Joe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, just because you said that, now I'm going to go and mint my own trophy. <laughs> 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 I want a picture of that. I want that uh, picture of uh, Obama putting the medal on himself. Yeah, <laughs> but I want it to be Joe putting the Hall of Fame medal on himself. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I, I think I just came full circle on this. I think I just patted myself on the back. But I do. Yeah. I I do really. I guess that's my roundabout way of saying it. I really love that custom Lego has become as broad as it is. It has forced us to up our game a lot. I don't worry about competition in the sense that like oh it's a zero sum market and if they're if if someone is buying so and so's they're not buying ours i don't find that to be the case i do I think, think like i think everyone's uh, found their niche yeah i don't even think it's even that distant though i think that i think people it raises everybody's game a lot you know what i mean like i talked about al from mini bigs and al al predates citizen brick for sure and he, we got to do some stuff for him early on that I think um, it was a good kind of collaboration. And now Al's fully capable of doing his own stuff without us. So from uh, like, oh, great, now there's more competition in the water. That's, you know, that's not how I look at it. I just think like, oh, man, when I open my Instagram and I see like Al or K-Town Bricks or somebody doing something that is like, oh, damn, that's really good. It makes me kind of like double down. It keeps me kind of like sharp, I think. There's no, a lot of good cool. guys out there now. Yeah, yeah, and they all seem really, like I, mean, I have. I only know Al. Yeah, you know, I don't know anyone from K Town personally, but yeah, you know, they all seem very friendly and share a similar mindset. Yeah, I think everybody's really interested in like bringing their best to market. You know, I think there used to be a time when it was a little more backstabby and and not not with anybody in particular, but I think there was a lot of more people being like it was a little bit of a land grab and everybody was trying to like chase the same spaces, but now everybody brings their own kind of flavor to it. And everyone's a little more established. It's complimentary, isn't it? It's uh yeah. 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 Everybody's found a lane to work in and they can do what they do very well. And it's not, there used to be a lot of people screaming about so-and-so copied so-and-so or, you know, I think a lot of that stuff is in the past now because people found a way of working uh, that suits them, you know? Yep. What's great is when I see that there are certain, like I've got all my CB mini bigs and true red in one, you know, case together. And it's funny is when I was pulling out like parts for like the post I did with you with all the heads, I, it's, I had to do a double take once or twice. Cause I'm like, they started complimenting each other so much because I feel like as though everyone's found their own niche, there are still some influences between them. Where I think they look, they look all look great together. Yeah, there's some DNA that overlaps. I think. I mean, I, I like I always knew K Town as the medieval folks, and then they make this goat fig, which was just awesome, and I had to grab it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just think the there's cross pollination. This is the part where I make say some outrageous thing about how they, um, you know, they're all copying me. <laughs> 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 Look, we start some. Let's start some. Let's start some, let's start some um, controversy here. They they wouldn't be anything without me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really love all those guys. I like their stuff. I think they're all pad printing, and that's worth noting. I think maybe Absolutely. history mm-hmm. has proven that that was the right fork in the road. Yeah, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of crappy UV pop ups lately. Oof, yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Man, once you decide you're going to make pad printed figures, you are signing up for a very, uh, you know, a, a tough road. And I talk shop with all those guys all the time. Not true red. I, I've never had much. Like, it's not somebody I run into. I think he's in Italy, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
but I mean like Al and um, Ethan from K Town, I see them all the time, and we always talk shop. And if there's like a technical problem somebody's having, we can all text each other. So it's it's good. I can talk about Lego and I can talk about pad printing with some of those guys, which that is, is cool. awesome. I yeah. um I mentioned that to when I was talking to Phoenix Customs. You know, I was like, why don't you have a, like a, a red phone you can pick up and just get up <laughs> any brand owner and then talk about these things, coordinate releases or whatever. And I, I can't go into too many details, but some of those types of things are now happening, especially in regards to how brands interact with resellers and whatnot and in the uh, Asian market. So yeah. it's great to hear that on this side of the pond that um, that you guys can all just do that, you know, freely. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I don't something happened to me in my very first Lego show back in like 2011 where I kind of innocently asked another vendor like, Oh, this is cool. Where'd you get, where'd you get this packaging or something? And the guy in a very gatekeepery moment, it's somebody who's not around. It's worth mentioning. Maybe this is why um, <laughs> it's like, that's yeah, a trade secret. I can't tell you that. I'm like, I was like, I have the internet. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I mean, I'll figure it out. It's not, you know, um, I don't like to be gatekeepery about this stuff. And I like talking shop. So if someone goes like, oh, what ink are you using or how are you doing this? I'm more often likely, I don't have any proprietary secrets. I think I'm confident enough in what we make um, that I don't feel like I need to steer somebody wrong, you know, most of the time. So we skipped it. We skipped this earlier, but um, zombies. I cannot mm. not bring up zombies when I've got these two guys in in the chat with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carrie, what are your questions? Oh, where do I start? Uh, I don't know. I love zombies. I'm obsessed. Uh, it's probably one of the first things I actually bought. Actually, no, I bought Jason was my first one. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I'm just going off the script here, but tell us about the origin of the zombies. What goes into their designs? Uh, okay. So zombies are my personal favorite little subset of what we do with the only, like the closest sec would be maybe clown stuff. Cause that mm -hmm. makes me laugh a lot. Why don't um, we have zombie clowns? Yes. Well, I do. <laughs> I mean, we haven't finished it yet, but there is a, that's not hard to do. We, we were joking um, about you should make for every release. You should have a zombie version. A lot of them do. I like, First of all, I like, I'm a big zombie movie fan. And when I started doing this back in 2010, I had drawn an initial batch of things that I thought would be like good starter ideas. Like, oh my God, why is there not a Lego zombie? And as soon as I like made the plates for it, it was when the first collectible minifigure line came out from Lego <laughs> and they had Lego zombie in it. And that was my first taste of like, oh man, I'm going to have to like get faster at this. So I could say, and it would be true, that I came up with a Lego zombie before Lego did, but nobody cares because I didn't get it to market fast enough. So it's like, it's kind of a hollow victory that doesn't mean anything. But I, I was like, all right, well, it's cool. We're thinking along the same lines. So I always like making zombies. From a practical standpoint, Carrie, you might want to cover your ears for this. Nobody buys just one zombie. I mean, people buy handfuls of zombies at a time. So it's like, it's always like really good, steady business. Uh, <laughs> um, and I also kind of like that they're a little bit of a design challenge, similar to the military stuff, in that you're basically drawing the same thing over and over and over again. You just got to find a new way to draw it each time, you know? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our zombie figures have the same ingredients. There's a little bit of blood. There's a little bit of ripped up clothes, a lot of gray skin. You know, you just got to find a new way to do it. And I like that challenge. Same with the military. Like I got to find a way to draw pockets and zippers and belts and whatever and make it kind of visually interesting to me. Is there but, any uh, specific inspiration there though, Joe? Is anything, you know, is it movies or is it literally just uh, a thought that'll pop into your head at any given time or? Um, I, I, I mean, the zombie scout and the pedestrian zombie are two of my favorites. Cause I like the idea that they could just be sprinkled in a regular mock. Um, like the more wholesome, the starter part of it is, and then making it a zombie version of it is very funny to me. <laughs> no, 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 honestly, I mean, I, I love the zombies. I, I, I do. I love them so hard. It's ridiculous. But the, <laughs> the, the reason for it is they perfectly, uh, there's a perfect cross section between cute and grotesque. Yeah, 
Yeah, and like you said, you said about you know um, nobody cares about the zombie. Uh, Lego came out with the zombie just you know before you managed to get yours out. But you do the zombie better than Lego does. Do you know what ah, I mean? It, it suits oh, sure. Lego better than than their own designs. You know. I'll take that. I will take that. Thank you. <laughs> so I guess the only request is carry more zombies. Well, I would like to personally request a reprint of the Messy Eater Head so that I can get one of every color. Just a small ask. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah, that's, you know, a little backstory on that one. That was the first one we ever drew that had more colors than the press would allow. So that was the first time we ever had to try to figure out how to print a five-color design on a four-color press, which is a pain in the butt because you have to run it through the press twice and make sure everything lines up. So it's it's effectively twice as expensive to make as any other one. So that's a good example of something where I'm just like, the design trumps the fact that I'm losing money doing it. I just want to see it done the way that I drew it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that that one is probably due for uh, an upgrade. So I would say that that's, that's probably on the, the short list of ones to remake. I think it's become the, the most iconic of the heads as well. Yeah, it, at the time it was like the bloodiest Lego head, I think, in <laughs> existence. <laughs> Bill, did you ever get that uh, soldier zombie? Uh, no, I've got the soldiers on me. The only things, well, there's there's three items I, I am missing, like original designs, and then everything else is just misprints, which, as anyone knows, trying to get hold of misprints is completely luck of the draw. And like I said earlier, you know, Carrie's helped me massively when she's been to cons and that, uh, and I'm eternally grateful to her. But, um, but yeah, the only things I'm missing, I think there's one type of legs. Um, there's the panda torso, which I mentioned already. I would kiss you if I could get it. And um, <laughs> there's, uh, the other thing, which I know is impossible, is uh, you did a commission for Bricks by the Bay in 2015. You did a torso oh. and a head. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, got, I managed to trap the torso down with the head, which is a glow in the dark only, I think, as well. It was an exclusive color. That one, uh, that's eluded me a couple of times. <laughs> man, I'm trying to picture it. I do know that it's got like very... um, big eyelashes, I think. It looks yeah. almost like a sugar skull sort of look to it, really. Yeah, I don't remember if I think, okay, uh, that was a, a little bit of an exercise in like committee design where I think the organizers were like, we want you to do this. And here's what we want you to print. And they gave me a design and it was really not um zombie-esque. Well, not my not not the way I would have drawn it. That's as diplomatic mm. as I put it. It was difficult to print and really kind of like, all right, well, I guess you're the customer kind of thing. And I don't think we I think thankfully I don't do that anymore. I go like, okay, I'll I'll print what you drew the way you drew it, even though I think it could be it's gonna be tough to do. You know what I mean? I don't if we do commission stuff, it's I'm going to draw it the way I think I want to see it. You know, that's kind of just like the, that's the rules now. <laughs> so I don't even know if I have one of those because I think I didn't love how it came out, but yeah, I, I don't know. They, they're out there, but they're, yeah, they're just not really, uh, they're not really common. But like I said, I, I, I appreciate that one's not going to get a, a reprint because I know it was a commission job and I know you wouldn't. I you love the, the, uh, the brick arms one, uh, you know, the zombie defense pack. Yeah. 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 The yeah. Green I love the green head, but I'm desperate for that in grey. But I know there wouldn't be misprints again because it was a commission job. So it's something that I love it because it stands out. But at the same time, I hate it because it stands out as well. <laughs> Wait, so you like you? You're talking about? I can't remember whether we had. Oh, we did the green ones for them. Yeah, and, we did a green one. It's got like a red eye. It looks yeah. like the Blinky Zombie. Yeah. It's funny because I, I every time for a while there, Will Chapman was asking me to do those for, and I would always draw him like three or four versions of it and let him pick which one he liked, and. I always kind of said like, oh, please don't pick this one. Please don't pick this one. Because if you don't pick this one, then I can do it. And we ended up subsequently kind of using that for a citizen brick design. I even drew him like a zombie Will Chapman one. He never went for that one. <laughs> I thought it would have been a Yeah, I I I love drawing zombie stuff. I will uh keep doing it. There's always a well, you need to start loving printing zombie stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got. I got. If I could, I got a, if I could I got keep a you locked up in the bitch months, I would just design his zombies all day, Joe. Honestly, <laughs> I think yeah. I got a stack about fifteen heads that I that need bodies. Yeah, they're they're just. I have to wait till uh, the mood strikes me, I guess. <laughs> but when it does, I usually knock out like four or five. You know, the time I draw the most um, is on airplanes, and I have a a flight to San Diego tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to have a good five hours of sitting, drawing stuff and I'll, I'll remember everything we talked about here and start working on some new zombie stuff. 
Thank fuck for Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> That's a t shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to have a lot of time in a hotel this week uh, to, to work on some stuff. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm really, really, really glad as well to hear that they're one of your favorite things because they, they, they seem like there's a lot of passion in them. Yeah. Just the design, yeah. you know. Because they always look, uh, they always, um, in their own weird way, I think they blend into Lego land more than anything else. Yeah. I was telling yeah. my, my kid yesterday about that I had a model train set when I was a kid. And I always thought it was so, I thought it was really boring. So I started making a section of town that the train would go through that had like a graveyard and had graffitied up buildings and had even, I made like a little nuclear cooling tower. So I made like a, a really troubled part of the town that the train would go through. <laughs> and I think I still do that now with Lego figures. I want to make, I want to make a part of people's mocks that are like a little off. <laughs> Just sneak in a, to brick world you know early morning <laughs> i start did planning, that. planning zombies in people's mouths. i'm gonna give you guys a scoop this is an exclusive podcast scoop when i when my my oldest was a cub scout we they did an overnight sleeping sleepover event at lego discovery zone that's nearby us so i got to sleep in a lego store essentially overnight and they had these giant layouts and, and they had like a whole model of downtown Chicago. And I woke up in the middle of the night sleeping in this. And I snuck into the, the model and I hid a citizen brick figure inside the giant layout of like their, their model of downtown Chicago. Wherever I, I hid a figure in the deep in the background. <laughs> and it's, as far as I know, it's still there. I'd be surprised if they had weeded it out. It was pretty camouflaged in there. But which one was it? Do you mind me asking? No, it was uh, it was just one with a logo torso on. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's like oh, it's the, that's the, the calling card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the little, dominatrix. Oh. Little a little branded merchandise in there for them. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Come and get me, Lego. <laughs> I think I think we we've, we've hit a lot of things. I've got a few closing questions though. If you don't, you have still have some time for us. No, go for it. This is a heavy one. Basically, uh, on multiple occasions in previous interviews and other articles, you've specifically distinguished. Uh, citizen brick from being a real job you mm -hmm. you've even just danced around the title by just calling it a full-time occupation yeah with a decade later of consistent growth in facilities employees and audience do you still feel that cv is more of a hobby and not just a job i think it's my calling now <laughs> <laughs> well with all the weight and responsibilities that have that have that have been exponentially grown and yeah for someone who doesn't fashion doesn't really fancy the the business side of it but now i have to deal with it more i think i'm i think i'm newly interested in making it a good like an effective business like i i that's a good trait to have yeah 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 but it's not it's not instinctive like it wasn't my first like i didn't go to business school i'm sure that there's a lot of running a business that would seem much more obvious to somebody than it does to me um and and I, I'm interested in 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 running it better so that people have a better time shopping and a, an easier time shopping and getting like all the logistics of getting their stuff from me to you better is something I'm kind of newly invigorated about. Like our website's always been kind of less than I want it to be. So I'm kind of circling back around and trying to be more on point about stuff like that. Yeah, look, I'm not. I just don't want to do anything else. This is all I can do. <laughs> oh, I, I I know that feeling. Like if I didn't figure out what I was doing in college, I really had no other backup plan. Yeah, yeah. So go, looking back, you know, Brick World Chicago, 2011, first convention. You managed to get a table, which is probably be no easy feat these days. Right. And you managed to introduce your world to your designs to positive reception. The, and a lot of confusion with the instant and there you gained your inspiration that this is possible we can make a business doing this if you did not get that table where do you think you'd be today um man i have i've not even thought about that for a second that's a good question um i i think i've cited that as being the moment that was the weekend when i think i made a very modest amount of money but it completely dwarfed how much money I was making teaching. <laughs> so I believe you I, said you made more that day than you made in a semester. 
Yeah. And that was such an, a, like a condemnation of like what teachers get paid, but also like such a revelation that, all right, man, I can maybe just like throw my lot in and do this and really give it a go. So I can honestly say I haven't given much thought to it. The only other thing I've ever thought about doing has all been in terms of what do I do after this, not instead of. And and I've never made any serious inroads into that. I think I'd like to be an ice cream man. I think I'd like to buy an ice cream truck and just drive <laughs> around giving people ice cream. That you seems- said that on Billy's podcast, so it's definitely yeah. something that's sticking in your mind. <laughs> hey, everybody. We need mocks of Joe Sigfig as an ice cream man. <laughs> the weirder, the better. <laughs> well, you've done fast food enthusiasts. You need to do a fast food. Uh, you need to do a, an ice cream man fake now so that we can yeah. combine them. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's that's the thing that keeps coming up. <laughs> I think I like ice cream. <laughs> we need we need the Joe Sigfig face printed on an ice cream. Let um, me ask you guys a question because I the the Sigfig thing has been a real point of personal contention. Like <laughs> I think it was I got I got kind of like badgered into there was there's a contingent of people who really lobbied pretty hard for me to make one, and I resisted it for a lot of years, and I, I think I was the last kind of custom guy to make a sig figure themselves it just seemed like i don't know it, it was it seemed like a weird idea to me and then i finally just relented because i felt like ah, eh, let's just see what the people do with it <laughs> um and it sold pretty quickly i was really surprised at how many people actually wanted that and now i think that the only answer is to maybe serialize it and do like me and like in leisure wear or me and <laughs> on vacation yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be good the way zombie, they used to do zombie it like, joe? i think zombie, zombie joe definitely. i think zombie joe is the way to go <laughs> would that be just beating a dead horse i don't want this to no. all be like well i think any any other looks and feels as long as the head and the hair are there anyone any of we can all do that on our own right that's okay. the whole joy of citizen brick Sure. It's being able to modularity well, of Lego. I think we need the beard on a zombie print, though. So at least the oh, head. Maybe it's a zombie Joe head. Zombie so Joe. Zombie, zombie Joe the exception, I think. Keep I, in we mind can, that we, it's we sold out, though. On you. We can put a dad bot on you, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's just on my, my pasty <laughs> dad bot. That would be great. <laughs> Yeah, the nipple, the nipple tassels, torso. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go get my gimp suit uh, yes. right now. <laughs> you do like full body tattoos that you don't know that I have. I'll just put them in Lego form. Okay. <laughs> but as Carrie mentioned, they are sold out. So Yeah, so you got to make new ones. Uh, well, and, that's and what then... kind of gave me pause. It's like, okay, yeah. well, maybe, maybe there's a way to keep making this a ridiculous kind of serialized idea. I'm not sure. Or, or you could just sell the head and hair. I don't know. I think I find those. I was putting together a bunch of figures today, and I must have like mixed up some bags because I found a couple of them that were the Joe Sigfig head, which has, I, I think, still the bleakest look that I've ever drawn on a Lego figure. <laughs> it's got this. I've somehow got my own thousand yard stare. Pretty it's lace and apathy, but there's a hint of oh, optimism yeah. somewhere in there. Definitely some existential it was in preparation for the all the filth lugging that was going to be done to you. I think that's what it was. You would look, yeah. looking into the future, you know. <laughs> I, yeah. I honestly thought that you tried a way to squeeze in the neutral face as an homage to your first print. Uh, if that's I think not the, true. That's a good story. You can run with it. No, I think there was a prototype that had a neutral face on, instead of my face, but that one only lives in, in the archive. I think. I mean, you kind of you know, you've got that, like you said, that thousand yard stare. Yeah. No, I think maybe I'll do like a, a, it's like a series of self portraits. I'll do like a, a one with it was. <laughs> My hair, if my beard keeps getting grayer, I'll make a grayer figure. <laughs> if you can do a salt and pepper beard, that'd be awesome because yeah. <laughs> I don't, you know, there's no family figure out there that has that kind of face for me. Yeah, I, I'll work um, on that. You've um, you've said though you're not you you know you weren't so sure about your sig fig, but uh, you're definitely underestimating yourself there because it's it's a similar thing to the superhero scene with Marvel. Everyone wanted a Stan Lee fig because you want that figurehead. Yeah. So it's the yeah. exact same thing. I mean, I'm, I'm not even a sick fig kind of guy, but I had to have a Joe sick fig. The only point of contention I had was I think you missed a trick with the name. And I've I commented this on the post, but I, I wanted it to be called the Joe Velord. <laughs> I, just, okay. I had to. I've been trying desperately to coin that term, but no one's rolling with it. So I've, I've given up. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's, but that's the only thing. Joe Lord? T shirt that says that. How about that? <laughs> uh, I, I, I got into the sick figs. I think I first got. 
I can't remember the first one I got. I think it was uh, just the torso that had Big's name printed on it. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, uh, you know, I got two of like, Harry's first in version two, uh, FSB, and move the back to see what I can see. Of course, I got Sketch Sig Fig, Parker, you know, yeah, his two iterations. And uh, I just I started to really enjoy them. So I think it's I think it's cool. You know, if freaking YouTubers can get like pop figures made of them, why can't, you know, minifigure brand owners get sure. figs made of them? Yeah, I'm OK with that. <laughs> it's all about the community, right? So it helps build a community. And I'm all for anything that helps humanize the brand. And that's why I appreciate you coming on this podcast, because a lot there's a lot of mystery behind it. And as someone who self-admittedly is busy all the time and can't get to every DM or every comment, you know, this gets a chance for people to get to know who you are and see behind the scenes, some of the motivations behind some of the decisions. And, uh, you know, a sig fig, I think, is also emblematic of that. Well, I think um, I really appreciate that people wanted to know. Um, I try to just keep my head down a lot and try not to you know, think about, like, I don't want the pressure of like, if I, the more people that I meet and the more people that I know and go to shows and, and they put a face to a name or a face to a, an online handle starts making me think like it adds up as pressure. You know what I mean? Like I want to, um, make all these people continue to like the brand and <laughs> like, I don't want to disappoint anybody. So anybody who submitted questions or really, is listening to this and really cares. I, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. So thank you for giving me a chance to uh, kind of talk through it. I'm happy to do it anytime. I'm an open book. Any questions are welcome. The the feeling is is um, reciprocated because as as someone who tries to build a community within you know the different brands and the companies, you start getting on that more familiar level. You want to start supporting those brand owners. Mm. You know. I yeah. got I got off I got done interviewing Jocka Brick and I was like, shit, I need to buy that flash fig because I want to support them. <laughs> I don't even like the movie. You know, it's, so it, it's it's hard to not build this parasocial relationship where you're just trying to you want to throw all your money. I'm like, you're gonna sell figs regardless whether I do it or not, but I want to throw my hat in the ring whenever I can. But I also have to set just you know standards for myself and rules to keep sure that I don't overextend myself in, in my spending habits. Sure. No. And I really appreciate that there are podcasts like this one where people want to talk about that's what's kind of, you know, that's the mortar between the bricks. I think as far as the community goes, is they're having like kind of centralized places where we can all kind of, you know, I, I listen to all the other episodes and I learned as much as anybody else who's outside of making of things, you know, it's just, it's great to have a, a forum like this. So thank you. Yeah. So do you, uh, I got a quick question. Do you, do you miss teaching? Uh, yeah, I, not in as much that I'd ever like to go back to it. It's a tough way to make a living. I certainly liked being the smartest person in the room and listening to myself talk. That was always cool. <laughs> but, um, I just liked what I was teaching. I liked teaching print making and I like technical printing. That's kind of my, my world. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough way to make a living for sure, but uh, I don't think I'll be going back to it anytime soon. Oh, I'm sure you don't miss the pay. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> just just knocked out 10 years. I mean, you're almost halfway to your next decade over. I don't know. I feel like I'm really, uh, you know, it's like the coyote. If you, if you look down, you're going to fall <laughs> off the cliff. Um, <laughs> No, I don't know. I, I, I'd like to just keep doing this for a while. Um, as long as people support the business, I don't see stopping. I'm certainly not losing any interest in it. There's, we're just now getting to things that I have wanted to do for a decade. Um, so I, I still feel like there's a good... We haven't run out of ideas yet. So That's I feel an, an urgency to kind of get them out there quicker than I did before. I, I'm conscious of the fact that uh, I have a list and I, I'm not going to real. I want to get them all done before I die. <laughs> so we're rushing now. I think I asked Zach this once, or I asked Nick when you guys went to uh, the headquarters for the visit. Um, you guys have a, do you do have like a catalog, right? Everything you've ever made, like a, a wall or a memorial yeah. or something? We have a, a, a display case that has almost every one figure that we've ever made. That's awesome. Do you ever think about posting that online in some sort of like, 
an Instagram archive of some sort so people yeah, can see what's been I have. In fact, we've we finally we're in the middle of archiving it in in the sense that I'm taking one kind of definitive photo of everything. I it, guess I half planned like I I don't want to say like we're going to make a book, but I would say that if someone said let's make a book, we would have a photographic record of everything. And failing that Maybe we'll just do like a checklist saying like, do you have this one? Do you have this one? I'm trying so, to figure out what to do with all one thing that, and so. we had this, con we've had this conversation in the past. Um, one thing I was suggesting that uh, is would be cool is the hardest thing that people have. And uh, there's, there's two sides of this. I think Nick had a great counter argument and I'll get to that in a moment. So I was thinking it would be cool is if you had a website of sorts that had these definitive product photos of each figure in its original form, right? Not a misprint color. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then you can allow people to register on the site and then they can upload their photos of a misprint color. Oh, wow. Gosh. So then rather than you doing all the work of trying to remember what would you print and what in, I don't know if you have keep a record or that or not. No. But, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you don't know what's been printed in like lime green or whatever. No. <laughs> uh, people then can like, it'd be almost be like a wiki, right? People can yeah. say, all right, Tattoo enthusiasts, and then people can upload their, you know, a tattoo enthusiast, and you 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 upload like a, a like a, a check a dynamic checklist of like every available color, period. They upload their photo, they tag which color it is, so that eliminates it from the list. So you don't get duplicate photos, and then people can then see. Okay, so far we know this fig's been made in this many different colors. That's a I mean it's a great idea. I think it's 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 a, it's a heavy lift. I'm not saying that's easy, uh, and I wouldn't even know where to begin in. in uh, developing that or if there's an additional you know if there's a commercial off-the-shelf product that would help with that but um no i like you know, it custom I, think, built. I think what we agree at is that we're at the point now when there needs to be some sort of like compendium because you can't depend on my memory it's all anecdotal to me and it's all kind of this like oral history that i only have a dim memory of a lot of this stuff <laughs> people show me stuff and go is this yours i go i don't know <laughs> <laughs> More or less, like more often than not, I can tell, but like not, it's not categoric or encyclopedic for me. I have to struggle to remember some of this stuff. But yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. So if anybody's listening um, and has uh, a similar experience or knowledge of this, let us know. Uh, and I'll, I'll connect you with Joe. Yeah. And um, we can see what can be worked out. This isn't some like something you can just buy off you know some wordpress theme or whatever so uh I, I think it would take a little more work and anybody who's offering to do it for free there it's probably not of a quality that we would expect or would want yeah i do feel this urgency to get it kind of down in some sort of form because parts of it are certain like i'm one warehouse fire away from losing everything oh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So at least go around with a video camera and just yeah. record everything <laughs> for insurance purposes sure Pop that concept is fantastic, though, because, you know, as someone only getting into CB in the last two years, trying to go back through all your old Facebook posts and everything, just to piece together, you know, what might have been released in the past is great for any any sort of fans as an entry point to know, where, yeah. where, you know what to look back for. But the other part as well, you said about the misprints, Brett, that's really good because a lot of the big collectors are quite guarded about their collections. They don't post publicly in that. So if there was a way to anonymously upload those pictures, right, they'd probably right. be incentive yeah. to do it, you know? Yeah. yeah, and you know, but like, imagine if Turtle could go in and just upload every gold misprint. Gold thing, yeah, <laughs> everyone knows which one's been made in gold. You know, it's funny. <laughs> I made a comment talking about um, BC Bricks, Brenna. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, I was telling Nick, I was like, "Hey, you know what? She posted the turtles. You know what that means?" He's like, "Well, I was like, that means there are no misprint turtles because <laughs> if, if, if they were there, she probably has them." Yeah, she. Uh, I got to meet her in person recently, and she's uh, great. Um, yeah, super sweet, super nice, very enthusiastic. Just uh, can't ask for more in a customer than that. <laughs> yeah, no, she's been. She was great. She answered a lot of my questions when I was new. Yeah, and yeah, um, yeah that's you know, the she's a of... Jason enthusiast. I like sent her the Freddy vs Jason one I did, and she really liked it. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but yeah, no, I really hope to make it to Brick uh, Brick World to meet a lot of these folks. Yeah, I, I would say that that is the one where I don't want to say all of our energy goes into everything, but that's the one that I've started to feel like an extra obligation to 
go big on. It's you know? your San Diego Comic Con. It is. It's my Super Bowl. That's what I tell people. <laughs> yeah. I used to say that about CB Day. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So I I hope um I hope I was able to answer everybody's questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, but does your family? Uh, that's the question I asked Adam. I think it's customs as well. Does your family like realize how big you are? You walk over with the Ron Burgundy voice saying, kind of a big deal." <laughs> uh, they've seen me sign autographs, which. I think put them in their place. (laughs) (laughs) I told you I was kind of a big deal. (laughs) I told you I'm very Lego famous. Uh, (laughs) No, I don't, I don't know. They, they know I have a job that, and I try to tell them this as they're kind of thinking about what they want to do when they grow up is like, uh, you got to find something that you really, it's a cliche, but you find something you really like to do. And then you find you'll have an endless energy to do it. I think. Um, this doesn't feel like work to me, although I definitely put in the hours. It certainly qualifies as a job, but it is it is the most fun kind of occupation I could ask for. So I think they know that I'm kind of, you know, forging a less conventional kind of path f- to make a living. And I think that that I think they see that I'm happy doing it. So I think that's the lesson. Yeah. Well, you know, like. You want to go to college? This is how you get to college. <laughs> now, let your father draw nipples on toys. Otherwise, you're not going to college. <laughs> I don't want to make figs, Dad. I don't want to be you. You're going to bag up those tiny plastic penises, and you're going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> how do we follow that up? Nothing. I think that's it. Uh, I think it's yeah, spicy. Just end it. <laughs> Actually, one, one last question. <laughs> for the, for the, there's there's a little joe out there and i'm not talking about penises again <laughs> there's a little joe out there somewhere that is one day hopefully trying to do something that you to replicate your success what would you what advice would you give to someone trying to learn pad printing and just learning this business you know someone someone asked me that a, a younger guy asked me that very question in texas and i i've been troubled by the answer that i gave because i think it it was born out of just the exhaustion of the day. Uh, He said like, what do I do to get into pad printing? And I said, just don't do it. And it made it, it it (laughs) sounded like I was trying to throw him off the trail of something. And what I really meant to say is that when I started doing this and I talk about it being like a house built from the roof down is if someone had said to me an itemized list of things that I would have to do to effectively pad print Lego minifigures and it said like, oh, this is almost a million dollars. I would have said like, oh, well, that's crazy. It, it's not happening. And if it, it's only because I built it kind of incrementally and only recently kind of got it to where I think it's kind of like a semi-professional setup. The cost would have been overwhelming up front. So I would say that like pad printing is, is definitely a big factor in what Citizen Brick minifigures, the, the look and feel of them for sure. But I think... I think the aesthetics of the drawing is an equal amount. So I would say like you may, you're not going to be able to set up a pad printing shop very easily or safely, you know, but you could draw stuff and, and maybe just draw. Maybe that's almost more important is drawing good designs in a tiny little three quarter inch space is more important. Like you can pad print stuff, but you could pad be pad printing terrible designs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I would say um go be an ice cream man. <laughs> <laughs> um Phil, Carrie, did you have any uh, parting thoughts or questions? Uh okay, Beetlejuice when. <laughs> uh, you know what? Legos already got that one. Uh, it's, it's, pretty cool. Yeah, I I it's a little touchier doing anything that they've already done. Um mm. that's all. They all did right. a pretty good one. That's a pretty good figure. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm breaking my rule a little bit here with a fangirly request, um, mm-hmm. but I, I feel like I'm doing a disservice to myself if I don't ask. Um, are you a fan of what we do in the shadows? Have you ever watched it? Uh, I was just, I just binged like a whole half a season tonight, actually. Right. I'm, oh, I'm the new season? I have watched yet. Not the new one. I, I'm still catching up on the last season, but I... Oh, I, it gets so good. Yeah, it's <laughs> the first, such the first good three show. seasons about this world. They sort of dropped off a little bit, but it's still great, even you know, even now. But I just we, we we talked about this last year in our group chat, and it's kind of perfect because there are five figure, there are five characters. They all look quite unique. 
they've all got interesting costumes. I'm just wondering if there's ever a possibility of a of a five pack by any chance. <laughs> I'd be so you know, down for that. It's got all the criteria, and then it's a thing that I personally am really fond of. Like a lot of the best things, the things that I'm most excited about making are things that I I have a real fandom for, and that's definitely one of them. So I would say, let's do this. Maybe somebody, not me, because I'm terrible at communication. But if you guys get the list of 32 of your top ideas, we'll 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 do a March Madness bracket, and we'll see which one. <laughs> Uh, the only reason I suggested this one is because it kind of goes right against the the whole shelf life thing. It's one of those shows that's like become an instant cult classic. So I think yeah. it's going to stand the test of time. And it was received really well in our group chat. Everyone was like, "Yeah, that that would be awesome," you know. And I think it would just be really well received. I think it's a uh, it's a strong maybe because it's definitely one that I would like to figure out how to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so action items are anybody listening that knows of a platform that can describe what I'm talking about regarding the website archival uh, database that allows people to upload photos. Carrie can help with the March Madness. We can help both figure out how to solicit questions. And I don't know, Joe, do you have any other parting thoughts? I don't know. Anybody wants to do my taxes, that would be cool too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my wife's really good at those. No, no <laughs> problem. Send them questions. over. No, thank you. Um, I, it, I, I really appreciate getting a chance to talk about this stuff. Um, I'm happy to, if you, if you find that uh, questions keep piling up and maybe I was cryptic about something or you need a better explanation, I'd be happy to do this anytime again. This was a, a real treat. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, open invite to come back. We'd love to have you around and maybe even just for other topics of discussion where you can just be Joe and not citizen brick. I don't know that there's such a thing anymore. I think this is. <laughs> well, I just give you give you a break, you know. Um, I mean, I look that, forward that, to seeing you. That's prepare. the look on your sig fig, Joe. You don't yeah. know where you start and citizen brick ends. That's that's the <laughs> luck. <It's>, uh... <laughs> oh, oh, ooh! Don't know where to start. Doesn't know where it ends. Joe, we need human centipede. Oh, stop. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we don't, Joe. Disregard that. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> Is that is that anus enthusiast? I don't know what you call that. <laughs> that's a molding. That's a that's a super big molding project. <laughs> but um, all right. Well, thanks again for thanks for again for tuning in. Um, for those listening, you can find us in Brick Brick Products at citizenbrick.com. If you're heading to Brick Fair, Virginia, that's in August. Be sure to swing by the table and spend all your money. <laughs> uh, just be sure to tell them about the podcast sent you. So you know, it looks good for me. And. <laughs> <laughs> In the show notes, I'll have a link to everyone's Instagram page as well as to uh, Billy's Bricks and Banter podcast where you can catch Joe's interview with Billy. So be sure to head over to there for a listen and check out his other episodes. They're really great. And then uh, I guess wrapping up, please remember this podcast is written, produced, and paid for by yours truly. If you want to show your support, there are going to be links in the show notes in my Instagram bio to my Buy Me Coffee and Print Shop websites where every dollar goes back into paying for the services and equipment used for this pod. As always, you are never obligated, but it's always appreciated. Until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and we'll see you next time. Say bye. 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 That's better than what Nick did last time. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Yeah. And so, Joe, that, that's it, man. That's how we do it. Wow. Cool. That was great. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone. Uh, just wanted to say a quick thanks for everyone who has stuck with me through the 12 episodes now of this podcast and more importantly through these last three episodes talking with joe from citizen brick it really was something that we expected to be maybe a 45 minute to an hour chat and i was not expecting uh, upwards to four episodes worth of content so thanks for sticking with me thank you everyone for your great questions joe was an amazing guest I'm pretty positive we'll have him on again in the future and um, until next time, see you soon. Take care. Bye. I want you on my rack. I want to make you ring. I want you to unwrap. I want to pull your string. Bring me the next.